welcome back and thank you for tuning in so today's show is for the grade 12 we're going to be doing geography and we're going to be doing fluvial landforms yeah that's what we're going to be doing so yeah don't forget to like this video don't forget to subscribe and as usual to tell everybody that you know to tune in so yeah as i said we're going to be doing fluvial landforms and there are a lot of fluvial landforms but the ones that I'm going to be focusing on in this video today are the ones that are commonly examined and ones that I also have seen that is, are, is, are important. Yeah. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing today. And feel free to ask any questions, you know, drop comments. So yeah, I feel like we should get started. <laughs> so the first one that we're going to start off with is a meander. And a meander is simple because as you can see here, it is a bend or a curve in the course of a river and what you need to know is that a meander right when the water flows okay this is the river the water flows through here the flow is faster on the outer bend in comparison to the inner bend right so because of that there is more erosion on the outer bend and that erosion like those particles are deposited on the inner bend so we can say that there's erosion on the outer bed and deposition in the inner bed as you can see in this cross section that i drew out between um from a to b a being the outer bend and b being the inner bend so as you can see there is erosion in the outer bend and then that is deposited in the inner bed bend at b so yeah that's a meander simple and then secondly oh and another thing that you need to know that is that a meander is commonly found on the lower course of a river so you know that there's an upper course a middle course and a lower course a meander will be found in the lower course of a river because the gentle i mean the gradient there is more gentle so that could be an exam question where they say in which part of the river on, or in which cause is the meander found. Meander is found on the lower course of a river. Okay, so an oxbow lake forms from a meander. An oxbow lake, this is basically the oxbow lake. It is a river that was, I mean, it is a lake that was originally part of a meander. So what happens is over time with the deposition, as I'm showing you here, this is basically the second step. It first starts off as a meander. And then with more deposition, more deposition, more deposition, as you can see here, there's the deposition. So that is cut off from the main river. So we call that an oxbow lake. And if the oxbow lake dries up, we call it a meander scar. Okay. And then the next one is a waterfall. You need to know that a waterfall is as a result of hard rock over soft, I mean, yeah, hard rock over soft, less resistant rock. So that's why I just colored this a bit darker, just to show that this rock is harder and more resistant than the underlying rock structure. So the water flows over. So now what happens is because this water, I mean this um, this rock is less resistant, what can happen is that over the years, this can go backwards because the water is constantly eroding uh, the less resistant rock. So we can have a structure like this. And the more the, the, the softer rock is eroded, it goes it goes backwards and automatically the hard rock can't just hang in the air so that rock will also fall off so over the years the waterfall will move backwards we basically saying that it is eroded upstream and when that happens when basically everything is eroded it's going to form a gorge so just yeah you just need to know that it'll form a gorge and then also, instead of a waterfall, we can also have a rapid. A rapid is basically 
<laughs> the easiest definition is that it's a small waterfall. So instead of the hard rock layer being horizontal, the hard rock layer will be vertical. So there's just going to be like a bump over that hard rock layer and that causes turbulent water. Yeah, so those are the four most important that i also that i think you should know and then we also have your braided stream a braided stream is when a river splits into two or more smaller streams so this is just a rough drawing so you'll have a river there and then there'll be deposition of sand there and then another river there and deposition of sand there and you know so forth so you call that a braided stream and obviously the braided stream is as a result of deposition happening so that deposition just splits the river into more streams so yeah oh and another one is a delta a delta happens at the mouth of a river basically the mouth of the river is the the sea where there's deposition and a lot of deposition and a delta forms so there are others and you can just go over them in your textbooks and your notes yeah whatever medium you use but the ones i just covered are the ones that i think are the most important and that i have seen in many exam questions okay next up we're going to do this question and it is from the answer series so if you do have this book do use it it is a really good book there are good questions okay so we're gonna start off with the first question it says name the drainage pattern in the upper course of the river in a okay so we didn't cover drainage patterns in this lesson but it is in the beginning yeah i think it's just just a few pages before you get to fluvial landforms so yeah the drainage pattern is a dendritic pattern a dendritic pattern is the most common one and is the one that you should know like honestly okay i'm not advising this but i mean if you're not if you don't want to study drainage patterns rather study the dendritic one because it is the most common and you will be asked yeah like about it okay and the reason why i say it's a dendritic pattern is because it looks like branches of a tree and that is basically how a dendritic pattern looks like and then name the underlying rock structure likely to be found in area a so the underlying rock structure found underneath a dendritic pattern okay i'm gonna stop holding this, this is so heavy okay so we're back so to answer question two Rock structures that are found underneath dendritic um, patterns are rocks with a uniform resistance. Like, yeah, so they, they have a uniform resistance or it is rocks that have a homo hom homogeneous, homogeneous <laughs> geology. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm not really too familiar with the pronunciation of that word. Okay. Is the area is area a the catchment area or the mouth of the river um area a is the catchment area because c is the mouth of the river so <laughs> because we see the c well the the c as shown here so a is definitely the mouth of the catchment area and then 1.4 states the type of erosion that causes deep valleys in area a Okay, you need to know that in area A, the upper course of a river, there is a vertical erosion. So I would say that is the answer for 1.4. And then 1.5, name a natural feature that forms at nick point, at a nick point in area B. There are, there are two features that are commonly found at a nick point, and that is a waterfall or a rapid. So that would be the answer. And then in which course of the river does deposition dominate? Definitely in yeah, in C, which is the lower course. Because it is more flat and the gradient is more gentle. So ah, my hands are heavy again. Okay, we're we're almost done. Yeah, deposition dominates there. And then 1.7, name the landform that is likely to form from the sand deposits at the river mouth. 
that is a delta that is a delta so yeah that is it for questions i really need to start photocopying but that's illegal so i can't that's why i'm holding the book like this and that's a wrap thank you so much for tuning in i do hope you understood everything if you don't ask ask us and you can follow me on tomali tutoring on instagram to just dm me if you feel more comfortable there so yeah don't forget to like this video don't forget to subscribe thank you ladies bye bye